Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, trigger warning. Today we're gonna react to the 10 biggest lies about Shia Islam by FTD Facts. So guys, I say trigger warning here because I know the comment section will go crazy yet again. Please take into consideration I have many Sunni viewers but Shia viewers as well. And all of you guys reach out to me and you present your videos for me to react. I like giving people equal chances. I like giving people a leveled playing field and then we can discuss. As the Quran says, present your evidence. If the evidence is weak, then we shall discard it and find out for ourselves. With no further ado, let's have a look. In an attempt to clear up misunderstandings and open the dialogue and discussion, here are some of the most common misconceptions, misunderstandings, and in some cases, straight up lies about Shia Islam. Hey guys, okay. welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton. And here on this channel, we strive to highlight all spiritual beliefs and religions. We have received many requests for us to explore Shia Islam a lot more on this channel. So be sure to watch from number 10 all the way down to number one so you don't miss any of these. Okay, let's begin. At number 10, Shias don't pray to God. Yeah, there's a lot of other Muslims who believe that Shia Muslims do not pray to God at all. And instead, they pray to Imam Ali or Imam Hussein or not pray to any deity at all. Now, this is a false belief. And From what I gathered so far is that Shias, of course, pray to God. However, they include Ali or Hussein into their prayers as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the main belief of all Muslims is the belief in one God or Allah in Arabic and God alone. Shia Muslims also believe in one God and they love God just as much as any other Muslim. Okay, he didn't clarify anything here. He simply dispelled the accusations that Shias do not pray to Allah directly. But my question would be, of course, where do those accusations come from? So to my Shia viewers, I would like to ask you, do you include Ali or Hussein into your prayers or even more so do you use them as intermediaries? That wouldn't be surprising to me at all. In the Orthodox Christian faith or even the Catholic Christian faith, yes, so-called saints are used as intermediaries that you use to pray towards God. Therefore, it would be no surprise to me. However, those Christians will say as well that they believe in one God and one God alone, but they do use saints as intermediaries. And this is the real question to the Shias here. also believe in one God and they love God just as much as any other Muslim. Shias have a different Quran. Now this is a very popular lie and it's often cleared up pretty easily, but nevertheless, the misconception does still exist. Shias believe that there is only one Quran and the one of the miracles of the religion of Islam is that the Quran was preserved in the original Form. It's believed that the Quran now is the original Quran recited by the Prophet Muhammad and all Shias read the same exact Quran. Okay, here again, question to the Shia viewers of mine, because I talked to some Shias that actually said that the Quran has been corrupted. Really, I heard that comment from Shias that assumed that the Quran itself has not been preserved. I'm not saying that all Shias believe that, but I heard it from some Shias. So please explain. Next up at number eight, Shias don't pray five times a day. Now, this is one of the most common misconceptions and lies. The five daily prayers that all Muslims perform are required to be done. And Shia Muslims, they pray five times a day. The only difference is the timings of the prayer. Shias pray the five prayers, but they split them up into three times a day. And now the reason for this is because the Quran only mentions three times of prayer during the day. Also, Sunni Muslim scholars agree that the Quran mentions only three times for prayer. However, they keep to praying five times a day based on hadith. But there are many Shia Muslims who actually pray five times a day like Sunni Muslims. All right, that was interesting to hear. It escaped me as well that it says in the Quran that you should pray only three times. I have never heard that before. But that is exactly the point. If you're combining prayers, you're not praying five times. You're praying three times. Think about it logically. If I sit down for dinner and I eat two meals instead of one meal, 
I still only had dinner once. All right, next lie to Claire up is that she has prayed to a rock. This lie Never comes from Shia Muslims praying on a torba, which is a round piece of hard clay that your forehead touches during prostration while you're praying. But okay. Shia Muslims, they do not pray to the rock. The Shia belief is that while prostrating in prayer, their foreheads must touch natural earth and not something artificial. Mm -hmm. This is done to follow what the Prophet Muhammad did during his prayer. There are several hadiths that state that the Prophet Muhammad lifted his head from prayer and the mark on the earth could still be seen where his forehead was, like the hadith found in Bukhari. And it says, and I quote, the Messenger of Allah said, the earth has been made for me a place of prostration and a means of purification. So wherever a man of my ummah is, when the time of prayer comes, let him pray. Moving on to number six, Shias okay. don't love- But ultimately that would mean that you can pray anywhere you want to and therefore you wouldn't need a specific stone. Prophet Muhammad, ooh. Okay, so Shias are often believed to only love Imam Ali and Imam Hussein. It is true that Shias love Imam Ali because of his role in preserving Islam as well as other qualities that he had. And they also love Imam Hussein and many other devout companions and family members of the Prophet Muhammad because of their devotion to their religion. Now there's a passage in the Quran, specifically in Surah 42 verses 23, that Shias base their belief on and it goes as follows. That is of which Allah gives the good news to his servants, to those who believe and do good deeds. Say, O Muhammad, I do not ask of you any reward for it, but love for my near relatives. And whoever earns good, we give him more of good therein. Surely Allah is forgiving, grateful. Now halfway to number five, she has focused too much on Imam Hussein. This is another big lie. He didn't dispel Imam anything Hussein yet again. Imam Hussein was the Prophet Muhammad's grandson, and Shia Muslims remember his martyrdom. Imam Hussein's family, as well as other members of Prophet Muhammad's family, were chained and dragged and held as prisoners. And both Shia and Sunni Muslims remember his death during the month of Muharram, and the pilgrimage to his shrine in Karbala attracts many people each year. So it's not only Shia Muslims who make this pilgrimage for what is known as Ashura, but Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, Hindus, as well as other Sunni Muslims, they commemorate his life and his stand against injustice by Buddhist paying Hindus. homage to his grave in Karbala. All right, the lie number four is Shias don't use the Hadith. But the thing is, how to pray in and of itself is completely based on hadith for both Sunni and Shia. So mm -hmm. the misconception that all Shias don't use a hadith or use hadith that are unreliable is just straight up not true. Many hadiths are taken from Alul al-Bayt with many famous Sunni scholars agreeing on the importance of the Quran and Alu al-Bayt. I understand for the sake of time we want to comprise this video, but ultimately he didn't say anything here. It would be interesting to hear what the differences between the hadiths are, which hadiths the Sunnis adhere to and which hadiths the Shia adhere to. Please let me know in the comment section because this video doesn't do a good job. Now, next up at number three, Shia Muslims hate Sunni Muslims. No, 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 no. Not true. Shia Muslims do not hate Sunni Muslims or any other non-Shia Muslim. Regardless, Shias and Sunnis, they are all Muslims who believe in Allah and love the Prophet Muhammad and all other prophets. Although there are differences, they all pray in the same direction, they pray the same amount of times, and they pray to the same God with the same amount of love for their religion. But unfortunately, extremists on both sides, they fuel this division and hatred towards each other. But there are actually many countries where Shia and Sunni Muslims live together in peace, such as countries like Iraq, Lebanon, Iran, Syria, as well as others. You'll also even find Sunni and Shia marriages. Number two brings us this lie. All Shias are from Iran or support Iran. Yeah, now, we've got to clear up for sure that not all Shia Muslims are Iranian or support the Iranian government. But yes, the majority of Iranians are Shia Muslims. Right. However, the majority of Shia are not Iranian. There are Shia that live in countries like Saudi Arabia and Lebanon, Iraq, Morocco, Nigeria, South Africa, Pakistan and India, Turkey, Malaysia, Indonesia. The list 
goes on. So mm -hmm. definitely you'll find Shia Muslims on every continent. And the final lie we got to clear up in this episode is the belief that Imams are infallible. Well, this is actually not true. All prophets okay. are born prophets, but as mentioned in the Quran about Abraham, that after passing the test, a prophet becomes a leader or Imam. And Imams are carriers of the message of Islam. She is considered Ali only as an Imam, but they consider Muhammad as the prophet or Nebi, as well as a messenger or Rasul and a leader or imam so yes imam is just one title but no they love and respect prophet muhammad and an imam doesn't necessarily mean that somebody is a prophet and completely infallible all right but now he just gave the definition of what it means to be a prophet or what it means to be an imam we get that however i talked yet again to shias that told me firsthand that those imams are infallible that there are some sort of spiritual figures that god himself elevated that family of the prophet that bloodline has been preserved and only those imams have that infallible knowledge yet again please let me know in the comment section what you think about this all right guys so this was a brief look at 10 Very of the brief, biggest bro. lies about shia islam hope you guys enjoyed this one hope you found it entertaining so hope so you bro. found it educational as always on here thoughts Not and so comments much. about anything i mentioned down below in the comment section all don't right. forget to leave all right guys and this is it for today's video nope not so educational after all as i said throughout the video there is a lot of debunking missing he says certain things but he doesn't back them up he simply says hey that is a lie that is a lie and that is a lie but where is the proof for that where's the explanation for that as i said with my own experience talking to shias those apparent lies here have been confirmed by shias so please let me know i know that not every shia is thinking the same i know that there are many different branches within shiism as well so please let me know educate me here in the comment section what the truth about those so-called lies is all right guys but this is it for today's video if you liked it leave the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon for example all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support and as always may god bless you all much love and peace